Hello, Jet Setters. I'm Jeb Brooks from Greenergrass.com, delivering what I believe is the very first trip report about a gondola in Aspen, Colorado. It takes about 15 minutes to travel all the way up to the top of Aspen Mountain's 11,212 feet on board the Silver Queen gondola. Join me for this adventure. Aspen may be most famous as a ski area, and one of the things skiers like is having the ability to get safely, quickly, and effortlessly to the top of a mountain. Enter the Silver Queen Gondola. Don't confuse the simple chairlift with a gondola we're about to board. A gondola lift, which should not be confused with the ones in Venice, are a type of aerial lift suspended from and propelled by cables from above. We didn't pack our skis. We saw no reason to embarrass the other athletes with our ability to shred the gnar. So we booked sightseer passes instead. These allowed us to travel the entire route in both directions without having to carve a line back down. The Silver Queen climbs 3,267 feet from the very heart of downtown Aspen, nearly to the peak of Aspen Mountain at 11,212 feet. Boarding a gondola requires a sure-footedness familiar to boaters. Once on board, we were in for a smooth ride. Some gondolas can hold up to 15 people, so I was happy it was just your creative director, my fiance, and me inside this one. The first gondola in the United States was built in New Hampshire's Wildcat Mountain Ski Area back in 1958. Today, there are about 14 of them just here in Colorado. Well, jet setters, you're now gondola setters or gondola riders or gondolas. I don't know, but we're doing it. I didn't know what to expect. Apparently this is a 13 or 14 minute ride up the mountain to 13,000 feet, which means I'm gonna be feeling pretty wonky in just a little bit. So hopefully you'll be able to see that on camera when I don't make any sense, or I'll just tell you about it. This is a really amazing view. I'm gonna turn, around, turn the camera around so you can really take it in. It is, uh, it's, it's a stunning, stunning place. Okay, in the interest of full disclosure, I might have overstated my skills on the slopes. I tried to ski for the very first time when I was in college. Now, I've never been very coordinated, let alone athletic, so deciding to trek to Virginia's Homestead Resort as a sophomore carried uh, innumerable risks for me. But that didn't really matter because, at that age, everybody's invincible. When I arrived for my first lesson, I stood beside my rented skis bundled up in enough layers that quite literally my arms stuck straight out of my sides. And at the base of the bunny slope, or at least that's what the sign said it was, it really just looked like a speed bump to me, the instructor arrived. He was a huge German guy. He'd obviously been teaching inexperienced newcomers like me for a long time, and based on the ingrained scowl he had on his face, it might have been too long. Something about me caught his eye. He, he was looking at me suspiciously. He could tell I was out of place. So after his brief assessment. He said, is anyone here a first-time skier? I cautiously raised my hand and he looked at me and said, oh, sh**. Anyway, that preliminary assessment uh, proved accurate and that's the reason we booked our sightseer tickets. I am a terrible skier and I really never made it beyond that first speed bump where I started. The biggest challenge here in the gondola is that the windows suffer from what I call CRJ window, which means they're pretty dirty. This is a non-smoking gondola. And although there are no in-flight meals, in terms of in-flight entertainment, there's signs to read, 
but all eyes should be aimed outwards anyway. Now, let's talk legroom. With seating for six, there's plenty of room for the two of us. Gondolas aren't just for skiing though. They're being used as a means of urban public transportation in a lot of places around the world. I remember in La Paz, in Bolivia, for example, there's a massive system I use to get around the city. As we approached the top of the mountain, I began to feel a little lightheaded. We were above 10,000 feet after all. Now, I didn't feel as badly as I did after my last high altitude gondola ride. That was in Quito several years back aboard the Telefrico, which reached an astonishing 12,943 feet and left me feeling dizzy, confused, and partially blind. This trip, however, just left me feeling a little cold, and the views did not disappoint. I was grateful for my sight here. It was a beautiful day, so we enjoyed the restaurant and views from the top of this mountain for the next hour or so. It's truly an amazing place. The restaurant has a cafeteria set up with plenty of options. There's also a bar which remained quite busy during our visit. Unfortunately, due to the county's strict rules, food and drinks could not be consumed inside while we were there. Those rules have relaxed in the time since. The ride back was equally impressive with beautiful views, not only of the village below, but also of the Aspen Airport. The sightseer ticket is a really great way for non-skiers to be able to experience the beauty and, frankly, majesty of Aspen Mountain. Not only to get up close and personal with this incredible feat of engineering, but also just to take in the views. I mean, climbing this high in such comfort is impressive, to say the least. Uh, can you share with us your impressions of the ski lift, the gondola? Don't look down. A ride on the Silver Queen gondola as a sightseer will set you back $39 for adults and $29 for kids and seniors. Unlike skiers and snowboarders, sightseers are only able to begin their rides between 1.45 and 3.30 in the winter. Check the website for summer details. I'll link to it in the description below. We really enjoyed our time in Aspen, and our ride on the Silver Queen Gondola was a real highlight of the trip. I'm Jeb Brooks, and between now and the next time, see you in the sky. Where will we see you? At the Apres Ski. Operate! <laughs>